Hi, fourth graders. We're going to start module 11 for math this week. Um, today's video and notes are for lessons 11.1 and 11.2. So most of module 11 is multiplication and towards the end we will work with angles and transformations. So let's go ahead and get started here. Um, for, module, uh, for lessons 11.1 and 11.2, it says I will use the standard algorithm for multiplication to multiply a two-digit number by a one-digit number with regrouping as necessary. So as we know, when we add, subtract, multiply, sometimes we need to regroup and sometimes we don't. So as a quick review here, let's take a look at some basic math facts. So again, you, it's really important that you are fluent in your multiplication facts. It will help you a lot when you are multiplying larger numbers. Nine times five, we know is 45. So then nine times 50 is the same as nine times five tens. So that would be 450. Nine times 500 is the same as nine times five hundreds if you're thinking about base 10 blocks. So you would have 4,500 or 4,500. Over here, four times six, 24. 40 times six, notice how they are putting the 41st and the 6th um, as the second um, factor. It doesn't matter the order when we're multiplying, just like with um, addition, right? 40 times 6 is the same as 6 times 40. So that would be 6 times uh, 4 tens or 4 tens times 6, which is 240. 40 times 60, now they both have tens, so it's four tens times six tens, right? So we know that 24 is four times six, and then there are two tens, or 10 times 10, which is 100. So that would be 2,400 or 2,400. Okay, now let's take a look here. So remember when we multiplied and we learned perimeter and area, solving for area required multiplying. And we had also, um, used partial products as a strategy for multiplying larger numbers. So if we look at this orange rectangle here, we have one side that is three and the other side is 23. So we can write it as 23 times three or three times 23. Now, if we were to divide this into partial products, remember what we did in a previous module was we would draw a line there and we would take 23 and use expanded form, and I'm writing it on top there, and we would say it's 20 and three, right? And then I would do my partial products. So in the first partial product, three times 20 or 20 times three is 60, and then three times three is nine, and then I would add 60 plus nine and get 69. So let's write that out here. So I solved three times 20 equals 60, and then I solved three times three equals nine. And if I add those, and if I line them up, right, it's easier to add, that would be my answer. Now off to the side here, we're going to solve it the same way, but using the standard or traditional algorithm. So then I would look at the ones place. So I can even cover up the two if I wanted to, the two tens, and do three times three is nine, and write it right down there. And then I'm going to do two times three, but it's really two tens, right? 20 times three or two, time, two tens times three, and that would give me 60. And the six is in the tens place. So as we can see, solving using partial products and the traditional algorithm, the answers match. Let's take a look at another problem over here. So if I want to take a look at partial products, what I normally would do is draw a line there and I would write expanded form for 34, 30 plus four, and then do my partial product, six times 30, 180, six times four, 24. So let's write that out here. I did six times 30, which is 180, and then I did six times four, which is 24, lining up the number so it's easy to add, zero plus four is four, Eight plus two is 10. I do have to regroup there. And then I have 200. So let's check here. Four times six, 
24. That is how I regroup with multiplication. 3 tenths times 6, right? So if I think 3 times 6 is 18, plus 2 is 20. This is actually 20 tens. And my answers match. Okay. We have a second half of our notes. So continuing our uh, strategy here. Let's take a look. 54 times 7. We are going to do the standard multiplication algorithm and then also partial products. So standard algorithm, I would write 54 times 7. And again, it's very important to line up the place values. 4 times 7, 28. You do have to regroup. 5 times 7 or 5 tens times 7, right? 35, add the 2 at the top, 37. Okay. Let's try with partial products. If we were to draw this diagram, this is how we usually draw it. Seven like that, and then 54, I would do 50 and four, okay? Seven times 50, 350, seven times four, 28. And then off to the side, I'm going to write my partial products and add them up. 350 plus 28. Okay. And once again, you can see that either using the algorithm or partial products, that my answers match. Okay. One more down here, 6 times 83. So we are going to write it this way, 83 times 6. Okay, 3 times 6 is 18. I do need to regroup. 8 times 6 is 48, plus 1, 49. If it helps you to cross out the number at the top when you regroup, you can do that so you know you've taken care of it. Partial products. So we would put the 6 on this side. And then I have 83, so I have 80 and 3. 6 times 80, 480. 6 times 3, 18. Let's add our partial products. 480 plus 18. Line them up neatly. Okay. And sometimes it's good to use two strategies and double check that your answers match. Okay, one more here, four times 37. So they already gave us a rectangle if we want to fill that out. Let me change my pen color so it's easier to see. Okay, so we're gonna put the four here. I'm gonna put it above 30 and seven. If I divide that, four times 30, 120. Four times seven, 28. So using partial products first here, I will just write 120 plus 28. Okay, so I have 148. Let's check it with the standard algorithm. 37 times 4, that's the same as 4 times 37. 7 times 4, 28. 3 times 4, 12, 13, 14, 148, right? Okay. I'm going to skip the last one down there for the notes because I think we've done um, enough problems. Now, I'm going to, give me a minute here, I'm going to actually have us take a look at stepping stones, okay? So let's take a look at 11.1. .1. Very similar to our notes, you can fill this in. They're giving you a word problem. The dimensions for a courtyard are 32 feet times three feet. How could you calculate the area? They've already drawn a diagram here for partial products, right? Three, and then they have already expanded 32 into 30 plus two. So three times 30 is 90. Three times two is six, okay? Now, if we were going to add that, the partial products off to the side, we can say 90 plus six, 96. Okay. And then they're showing you step one and step two of the traditional algorithm. So their final answer right here 
okay, matches our partial product. Moving down, they have another word problem. Another courtyard measures seven feet times 21 feet. So using partial products, again, seven times 20, 140, because I know seven times two is 14. Seven times one is just seven. Okay. And if we were going to add that, 140 plus seven, I know you can do it in your head, but if we were going to prove it with the, um, addition algorithm, we'd have 147. And then here they're showing you again, step one and step two using traditional algorithm. So they did one times seven, right, is seven. Here's their first step, okay. I'm going to use a different pen color to show you. Then their second step is like what we did in our notes is going that way, okay. And I'll show you over here too. That was their second step. Now, there's nothing in the hundreds place, right? So that's why we can come down here and the two tens times seven is 14 tens or 140. Now, if there was another number in the hundreds place, we would have to keep regrouping and keep going. Okay, let's take a look at Stepping Stones 11.2. I know I'm including a lot of this in here, so you can always come back and rewatch this uh, video or fast forward to the part that you need when you're doing 11.2. So very similar to 11.1, we have a word problem. Robert visits the penguin enclosure at the zoo. The enclosure is rectangular in shape. The short side is four yards long, right there. The long side is 23 yards, and they've used expanded form. Okay. What is the area? of the penguin enclosure. That's what they want us to answer. So areas multiplication, again, four times 20 is 80, four times three is 12, okay? If we were to add 80 plus 12, whoops, there we go, we would get 92, okay? come down here. Again, they're showing you step one and step two of the standard algorithm. They're just splitting up the steps. Normally, we would just show all of our work, right, once like that. Um, so they do three times four is 12, and you do have to regroup right up here. And then two times four is eight. Add the one, and you get the nine. And again, you can tell 92 there, and we also had gotten 92 using partial products. Okay. Write the pro partial products in the diagram, then complete the standard algorithm. Six times 10, 60. Six times four, 24. We can do that in our head. 60 plus 24 is 84. Let's keep that in mind. Over here, let's do the traditional algorithm. Four times six is 24. I do have to regroup. 1 times 6, 110 times 6, right, is 6 tens plus 2 is 8. And we get 84 there too. Okay, so hopefully this helps. And if you have any questions, you can always post a comment uh, to your teacher in your own Google Classroom um, or when you uh, meet in a video conference. Have a good day, fourth graders.